Namaste and welcome to React Bits. Today we are here to talk about the just announced version of AppRite version 0.11. Not long ago AppRite 0.10 was introduced with real-time API and 0.11 comes with platform-wide Apple support and some minor bug fixes and some new and updated runtimes. So what does AppRite 0.11 brings? First, the Apple support with, uh, with the Apple SDK, which we are going to demonstrate in this video, as well as Swift Server Runtime and Swift Server Side SDK. You can learn more about this release in the official announcement post. I will leave the link in the description below. Before we begin today's session where we are going to create a new iOS application and integrate AppRite, if you have not already, you need to install AppRite either in your VPS or in your local computer. And installing AppRite is really simple. Once you have Docker installed, you can just run a single command in order to install and run AppRite. I already have AppRite installed, so I'll be using my own version, but you should be able to follow along if you have newly installed AppRite or if you already have AppRite installed. Let us start by creating a new Xcode project. So I'm using Xcode version 13, create new. I'll be creating an iOS project. However, you can create multi-platform macOS, watchOS or tvOS app. All the platforms are supported. So next, I'll name this AppRite demo. Please note this identifier because we need this later in AppRite or we can get it later as well. I'll be using Swift UI. However, if you use a storyboard, you can follow along using the same process. Next, I'll save it. We have our new project. The first thing we would like to do is we'd like to add the AppRite SDK for Apple. Go to File, Add Packages, and here I already have SDK for Apple in recent, but we can easily search it. Using this URL, I'll provide the URL in the description. Once we search, we can find SDK for Apple and then we can choose the latest version that is 0.1.0 and then I can tap add package. It will take some time to fetch all the dependencies that are required. After the dependencies are fetched, make sure that AppRite is checked and you have correct target selected here and then add packages. We can see that SDK for Apple is added and in the package dependencies, we can see all the packages, all the transitive dependencies along with AppRite. Next, in order to interact, we will create a simple view model and we'll call it AppRite VM. So create new Swift file AppRite VM, save it. Here, first we'll import AppRite and then class VM observable object. Right now, we'll just be printing the output in the console. So let's start by creating AppRite client. Let client, client, and then make a initialization function in init will initialize our client client equals client and then we need to set endpoint and project so there's two things set endpoint and then set project so we need these two values for that we need to go to our AppRite console in the AppRite console you can use an existing project or create a new project. Let's create a new one. I'll call it iOS demo and I'll create it. And if we go to the project settings, we can get the endpoint. Let's copy this, paste it here. And then we can also get project ID. Let's copy this and paste it here. Now, before we are able to 
make a call to app right from our application we need to add platform so that app right can validate request is from the proper origin so here we do in the project dashboard add platform let's choose new apple app and i'm only using ios however if you are building multi-platform or for any other platform you can add a specific or all these platforms let's name it let's call it ios demo and then as i said before we need this bundle id if you did not note it before you can go to project and select this target and you can find the bundle identifier here you can just copy this and paste it here now we can register once the platform is registered all requests from this platform is validated as a valid origin otherwise you will not be able to make a request access will be denied now let's get back to our project we have initialized client let's see we want to let's say we want to log our user in or create a session for our user but we do not want to ask for any emails or password so AppRite has perfect method for that that is creating anonymous session let's see how we can do that button let's call it log in login anonymous here and before that let's create a function here for that we need the app rights account service let account and then let's create a function we'll call it login anonymous and here we'll call account dot create anonymous session and we don't need any parameter we can just say result in now we need to handle the result we get back and this is asynchronous so we want to handle it properly switch result and result can be one of failure or success so case dot failure let So in case of failure, we receive an error. Let's just print error dot masses. And in case of success, let we get session when we call create anonymous session. Let's print string describing session dot to map in order to see the JSON that we get back from server. In the init, we also need to initialize our account 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 and account requires a instance of client client now we have our initializer and account let's call it in our view here let's create an instance vm equals app right vm okay and when this button is pressed let's just call dot login anonymous let me build let me open up a simulator iphone 12 and let's hit build we now have the login anonymous button we can see it here let me tap this if i tap this we can see see the output in the console here that we get back the session and if i try to do it again let's see what happens we can see that cannot create anonymous session when user is logged in right so we are already logged in so we cannot do that again we got some error let's try to log out in order to log out we need to delete the session so let's go back to our vm and let's create another function let's call it logout and here we call account dot delete session and we need session id so session id in order to delete the current session we do not need to track the session id we can just specify current as the session id and in completion again we get result and let's handle it failure 
error let's print message in case of success we do not receive anything in delete session so let's just print session deleted let's also add a button in order to log out so let me wrap this with v stack and then add another button button log out and here we'll call vam dot log out okay and let's hit rebuild okay something is wrong ah i forgot to close the bracket here let's get back let's try to run again it's running and now i can log out session deleted but if i try to log out again i get the permission error or user role guest missing scope account because we are not logged in we cannot try to delete the session we can again log in anonymously so this is how simple it is to integrate apple sdk in ios project i hope you enjoyed this session and i can't wait to see what you will build with ios and app rights apple support if you like this video and if you want more ios app right or swift ui related tutorials please let me know in the comments thank you see you again in the next episode